Father, we thank you because your word says in Romans 8, we do not know what we should be praying, what we ought to pray. But the Spirit, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit teaches what we should be praying for our church. Lord, I love how the disciples came to you one day and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And Lord, we remain in the posture of humility that yes, we do not really know what we ought to be praying for. So come, Holy Spirit. Would you breathe life? Come, Holy Spirit, pray through us. We don't want to pray on our own. We want to be inspired. We want to be empowered. We want to be anointed by your Spirit. So Holy Spirit, would you come? Pray through us. You know exactly where your church is. You know the condition of the church. Just, how, just like how you have known the churches, the seven churches in the book of Revelation. You are the God who commended them for the great work that they have done. But you're also the God who rebukes them for forsaking their first love. So come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Teach us how to pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated, and it's welcome to our day two. Thank you so much for coming. In the midst of your busy schedule, you have made a decision, a priority to come and pray to the Lord. And like that prayer that I said, the Holy Spirit knows, right? Anyone? There are times when we do not know what we ought to be praying for. That's why we need to be praying, Holy Spirit, pray through me. And you know, when the Spirit prays through us, it's always in accordance to the will of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Okay, so our main focus for tonight is how to pray for the church. And as I was listening to the Spirit, the, the Spirit led me to Revelation chapter 2. We know that we are living in the last days. And I love how Pastor June will have a series on the book of Revelation, of how the Lord, you know, commended there are words of commendations for every churches but there are also words of rebuke you know the lord will really rebuke and we are living is this is the most exciting part of our life because we are living in the last days and i want you to know god is coming for a bride for a spotless for a, a blameless a pure bride is that you tonight is that you tonight only a bride who is blameless and spotless will be excited to meet with the bridegroom isn't that exciting okay so let's go to book of revelation chapter 2 to the church in ephesus so pastor june i'm sorry i'm going ahead but it's prayer meeting to the angel of the church in ephesus right the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands, who walks. Don't you know that Jesus is walking with you? He, like the song, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. It, what a joy, Kuya Ronel, tulungan mo ako. What a joy we say as we tarry here, none other has ever known. He walks in the, in the midst of us. But we can be scared, we can be tiptoe, because this is a holy, righteous God. This is a God who is righteous in all his ways who is holy in all he does. He does not make any sin. But can you imagine that he walks with you? He, his name is Emmanuel, not just on Christmas, but he walks with me. Emmanuel means God with us. 
So I want you to be aware that, you know, every time, not just in church, reflect on your life as a church, as an ecclesia. You know, the word church from the Greek word is ecclesia means the called out ones. We were called from darkness into light. We were called from our sins into righteousness because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So, Lord, have mercy. Am I becoming blameless and spotless and holy? Or there's a whole lot of blemishes and impurities and sin in my heart. Just let's go back to the Old Testament when the priest once a year will have to offer an offering. It has to be blameless and spotless. It has to be perfect or else it will be rejected by God. So that was already the preparation of Jesus Christ as the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the Lamb of God who takes away your sin and my sin. And I love this. This is comforting, but this is also sobering. Makahadlok ba? Ingon siya, verse 2, I know your works. I know your toil. I know your patient endurance. I love this translation, Pastor John. Patient, everybody say patient endurance. Patient endurance. And how you can bear with those who are, you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles, but are not, and have found them false. Okay. So I know your works. Pay attention to that. Look at your life. God is saying, I know everything you do. I know. I'm familiar. Can you imagine the Lord even counted how many hairs you have on your hair? Isn't that amazing? Wala jui salon dere nga maka. Ihapa daw akong buhok dai. No wala gyud. But this is, I know. This is a knowing that is intimate. I know you. I know you in your nakedness, in your vulnerabilities. I know you and I see you. And, I st and, and even when I know you, Norlene, I still love you. And I will always love you. And I, I, that will not change. So I know. God knows. You know, he was referring to the, the church in Ephesus. He was saying, I know all your works. I know your toil and your patient endurance and how you, can, uh, how you cannot bear with those who are evil but have tested those who call themselves apostles but are not and have found them false. So even during this time, there were people who were pretending to be apostles but they're, you know, they are just in sheep. In, they're hiding. They are not really apostles because of the kind of fruit. The fruit, yung buhay nila, does not really match with the teachings of the Bible. I know you are enduring patiently. How about that? Tell yourself, am I enduring patiently? And bearing up for my namesake, for my namesake, for Jesus' name. So this is their motivation. They are patiently enduring what, what's on their mind. It's about Jesus. It's about his glory. It's about his honor, right? It's for his name, for his namesake. And then in verse 4, the tone kind of changed. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned and love, and you, uh, sorry, you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. In other translation, um, I think NIV translated, one thing I have against you, you have forsaken your first love. 
you have forsaken your first love. Okay, everybody remember when you are so in love with Noel. What was that what was like what was that like? It was like a walk in the clouds. It's there, there's a word to describe. And remember the first time you met Christ, when you come to know and encounter the love of Jesus for the first time. And like, wow. And you you the Lord you you have come to experience the love of God and you, you, you are so in love with God. And you just, I remember, you know, you cannot help but read the word of God nonstop, pray to God nonstop. It's like, I love God. And when you love God, you keep talking about this person. You know, basig unsa ang istorya mo about Judas sa Ginoo if you are talking to me. I will like, okay, let's go to God. Because he is the love of my life. He is my first love. He is the center of my life. He is the first. Okay. Um, one, one author said, repeat the things that you did at first. You know, what are, what are the things you did at first? Prayer. Prayer is not something that, pag pray mo palang inantok ka na, Ay, kakapoy, dugay ba ang prayer meeting? Mahuli na ito, Sister Madel. Gutom na ko, baho ka ayo dari sa simbahan. No? Like, it, it bothers you, but like, you know, prayer. You know what? I just remembered one mystic. This one, he is a man by the name of Brother Lawrence, and he is a monk. And they were joking that this monk has never been promoted all his life. That's their joke, because he was assigned as a cook and a dishwasher. You know what? You know, Brother Lawrence, when I am in the kitchen, I feel the pleasure of God. I practice the presence of God, practicing the very presence of God. Paghugas niya plato, dili tuli makabuok. This is a monastery with how many monks? Probably 1,000. I don't know. But that's a lot of plates to wash. So give promote chapingin siya. No, I don't want promotion. Because when I wash the when I the pots and pans are clanging and cooking and I am washing and I'm, I feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of God. That God's presence can be felt in the midst of the chaos and the noise of the kitchen. And the hit, women, you know, we cook, right? Men, for Pastor June, right? No, but, you know, whenever, like this morning when I cleaned the restroom. Do you know, restroom doesn't smell good, but I would say, God, have mercy on my heart. Cleanse my heart. There are many things that is foul in my heart, God. Would you cleanse me? And I'm in the restroom. I'm not in the, in the church. But even in the restroom, I feel the very presence of God. When I wash the dishes and I would tell God everything that I feel, not just the good emotion. When I'm mad, when I'm discouraged, when I'm hurting. You know, people are like, what? You get this courage? Hey, I'm a human being just like the rest of you are. I minister to a lot of people who are going through a lot, but I go through a lot of that as well. And I meet God right there. How's your first love? Who is your first love? BCI, are you in love with Jesus? Are you in love with the Father? Are you in love with the Holy Spirit? Is he your, your breath, your life? It's like in him we live and move and have our being. That you, if you take life, Jesus in my life, I will, I will be breathless. I'll be nothing without him. So not, God was not very happy. We can, I can sense the tone change from the commendation, praising the church for all the good things that he has done. But I love how honest God is. But I have this against you. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Abandon. I love how this translation is, abandon. The other translation is forsaken your first love. 
Okay, verse 5. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. And then the Holy Spirit is inviting, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from your place unless you repent. So there is judgment. You know, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Spirit is speaking to the churches. Please do not harden your heart. Please do not go on rebelling against God or going against His will. Continually, you know, one thing to be stubbornly doing because God says, I will remove. You know, if you will not repent, I will remove. So you have, yet this thing you have, I hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear. Ito yung sinasabi. So this is our prayer. We need to pray to the Jesus Christ. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is the paradise of God. I was telling my friends, you know what? We should not be afraid of death because death is a doorway to glory. No more suffering, no more pain. But before you go there, you need to also endure hardship, right? So what is the churches doing right now? Are we listening? Are we paying attention? Are we tuning in, tuning out the voice of the world and really tuning in? Like what the Samuel prayer, you know, he was telling Eli, I'm hearing. Someone is calling. Eli, did you call me? Like, no, I'm not calling you. He woke up again. Did you call me? Oh, Eli, God is calling you. And then, because Eli is an experienced priest, he said, Oh, you need to pray this prayer. Lord, oh, speak, Lord. Your beloved servant is listening. Are we listening? Are we listening? You know, Jesus is coming for a spotless and blameless and pure bride. He's coming soon, sooner than you can think or imagine. You know, a thousand years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. Some people say, why is, not, why is God not coming yet? In 1 Peter 5, we know that God is not coming because there are yet people who have not heard the gospel. He is not willing that one will perish, but that they will come to repentance. So tonight, not just tonight, think about it. What have you been listening to? Maybe we need to stop listening for a while to our social media notifications. Shut up, shut up, shut up. And simply, Holy Spirit, what are you telling the church? What are you telling us? What are you speaking to us? Where do you want us to go this 2024? Honestly, you know, if you look at the Facebook, everyone is doing goals, plans, and all that. As believers, we need to ask, Jesus, what are you up to this year? Holy Spirit, what's your plan for the church? How would you want us to be the light to participate in healing the world while Jesus is not coming yet? Amen? Amen? Amen. That's really exciting. So I'm calling you, repent. The word repentance is coming from the word metanoia, Greek word metanoia. This is like the transformation of an ugly cocoon into becoming a beautiful butterfly. Metanoia is the change of mind that leads to the change of heart, that leads to the change of action. Repentance, change. Are you ready to change? Do you want the spirit to change you? Am I the only one who wants to be changed, God? Change me, Lord. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart. Change my mind. Change my will. Change my bad attitude. Change me, God. Holy Spirit. I want to be ready. The greatest catastrophe in your walk with God is when he comes and he finds you doing sin. You know? 
please repent. You know, there is no repentance without the work of the Holy Spirit. None of us can change apart from the work of the Spirit. So even as we pray tonight, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, come. There are areas on our, in our lives that is not yet regenerated. Some, some theologian would call it unconverted heart. Part of us that's like really unconverted. I, I don't know if Augustine calls it disordered love. You know, when you love something or someone more than you love God, that is what you call disordered love. And God says, come back to your first love. I am here. I'm always waiting for you. You know, I'd like to close. This is a song that I remember. And maybe you can just close your eyes. I'm not really a good singer. <laughs> But I'd like to sing that song. I miss my time with you, our moments together. I need to be with you each day, but it hurts me when you say you're too busy, busy trying to serve me. But how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? There were longings in my heart, wanting more than just a part. I miss my time with you. So this is God missing you and me because we get caught in so many distractions. Let's all stand up. Let's just spend time in adoration. So right now, just come. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to God. Yes. Just, I want you to adore him. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just like this song, Who am I that God... The Father would send his son Jesus to die for me. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we worship you and we adore you. Let us adore our loving Father. This is a Father who does not grow weary in loving you. He is crazy in love with you. He thinks of you night and day. He is with you every moment. I just adore him. Let us just worship him. Yes, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The whole earth is full of your glory, O oh God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, High Priest who came, who became a man, who died on the cross for us. Let us worship Jesus Christ. Hmm. Remember the, the wise men, they saw the star, and then they stopped in that house. When they see Jesus, they bow down and worship him so right now i invite you bow before jesus bow before the king of all kings bow before the king of kings and the lord of lords bow before the king who is coming who is coming for his bride for his bride who is spotless and blameless thank you god we worship you, Lord. Just, I want you to tell God how much you love him tonight. Just begin to tell God. I want you to be aware that God is here, and he looks at you with love. And he says, I love you, my beloved son. And I love you, my beloved daughter. And I want you to simply respond to that in adoration and worship. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, we love you with all our heart. Lord, we love you with all our mind. Lord, we love you with all our strength. And Lord, we love you with all our soul, with all our being. Oh God, Jesus, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. You are the everlasting God, everlasting Father, King of Kings. Lord, your, your throne is eternal. Your kingdom rules over all. Thank you, God. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion, your dominion endures to all generation. We worship you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, even right now, we just want to offer to you our, our love. Lord, we want to commit. We want to, Lord, set us apart, set all of us apart, God. And Lord, we want Jesus, we want the Father and the Spirit. Forgive us for times when we have abandoned our first love. Forgive us, Lord, we have forsaken Jesus Christ. But Lord, even when we have forsaken our first love, your love is pursuing us. You are relentless in your love for us, God. Each day you're waiting, you're waiting for our return, and your arms are open wide to simply welcome us, to say, come, come as you are. I love you, my daughter and my son. Thank you, God. Set our hearts on fire for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we pray for BCI. That BCI will hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Thank you, God. What are you calling BCI for 2024? Holy Spirit, what is your agenda for 2024? Holy Spirit, what's your plan? What is your grand plan for BCI? Lord, we want to set aside all our agendas and say it's Jesus, Father, and Holy Spirit. Yes, have your way. Have your way. Have your way, God, in Jesus' name. Let's give God glory, honor, and praise. Let's just give him a clap of praise.